Opening night of the NBL season and the Perth Wildcats look the greatest threat for the title. The Wildcats offer the potent combination of James Crawford, Tiny Pinder and new recruit Ricky Amazing Grace. But undaunted, the Supercats counter with ex-Brisbane Bullet John Dorge, Shane Hill and American sensation Darren Rowe. The Wildcats ready to roar, the Supercats looking for the upset, the curtain raiser for season 90 next. Good evening and welcome to the Ford Club Arena in Geelong for the opening round of the 1990 National Basketball League. Tonight, the Geelong Super Cats against the Perth Wildcats and it's a very good evening to Bill Palmer. Bill, Perth look to be on a roll even before the season starts. There's a lot of hype about this team. There certainly is, Bruce. They have been tipped almost universally by the various pundits around the country to finish on top of the ladder at the end of the regular season. And uh, a good percentage of them think they can go on and win their first NBL championship. On the other hand, the Geelong Super Cats had a miserable year two years ago, improved quite a bit last year, and I think if we look at their team this year, they really are on the up and up, and uh, if, the, if the proof isn't careful, the Super Cats have the capability of upsetting anybody in the league. Let's have a look at the Geelong lineup, and from the back, Heel and Vaughns. Vaughn's one of the newcomers, Rowe one of their stars, Bateman and Dorge, who comes from Brisbane, then Holgren, Hope, Griffin, Parkinson, and the coach, Barry Barnes. John Dorge, the transferee from Brisbane, will play a very important part in the Super Cats lineup this year. He's a true center, something that the Super Cats haven't been blessed with so far uh, in their history. And uh, if he stays out of foul trouble, that allows the rest of the Geelong players to play in their normal position. If he gets into foul trouble, the Super Cats start getting into trouble. The other player to look at new this year to the first national Super Cats is Brian Bonds. He had a very ordinary start, I'd have to say, in the Kmart Classic, the preseason tournament. Since then, he's heated up a lot. He's a player that likes to get out and run the boards and uh, is a very spectacular and high-flying player. And I'm sure all their fans through TVW are dying to have a look at this Perth lineup, and it is a star-studded one. Ellis, Grace, Ricky Amazing Grace, uh, Crawford, Pinder and Allen. Grace and Allen, the two newcomers there. Waterson, Torrance, Davis, Dempster and the close and the coach, Allen Black. It really is a power pack lineup. It certainly is and it's been a bumper year for the league right around. In the guard position, Ricky Grace looks to be one of the best of the best and, and uh, he'll have a lot of competition this year. But he really has come in to replace the uh, legend at Perth, Cal Bruton. He's a player that likes to run fast, good outside shooter, great quickness and penetration. He'll keep the fans on the edge of their seats all year long. The other player new to the Perth lineup is Jeff Allen. He's a real blue collar banger, works, likes to work down in the engine room. He gives the Wildcats a target around the basket all the time and allows James Crawford and Tiny Pinder to go out and play their more normal forward positions. The Perth lineup top to bottom looks very, very tough. So the opening match of Battle of the Cats, Geelong Super Cats against the Perth Wildcats. Perth, the hot favourites, tip off after this break. Welcome back to the arena in Geelong. This opening match of the 1990 National Basketball League season. And tremendous excitement here with the appearance of Ricky Grace, number 15, for the Perth Wildcats. And it's Shane Hill, the guard for Geelong. I'll be looking for big things from him tonight. Rowe, Hill, from outside. Not a bad attempt. Would have been just the start that Geelong wanted. Perth looking very, very well blended out there. The combination of height and speed. And uh, you see that they should have a rebounding advantage in this game. Dorge has come from uh, Brisbane. Missed by Vaughan. Here's Grace. To the other recruit, Allen. Pinder. Crawford. But it's a Geelong Supercats ball. Control the rebound, but just uh, step back on the end line so Geelong does get the ball. Interesting to see that both Grace and Heel are matched up. Respective point guards. Dorge misses that one. Rebounded by Crawford. Both teams starting uh, quite raggedly. Mike Ellis, captain of Perth Wildcats. Allen to Grace. Quickly around to Ellis. In a shooting position. Misses. Taken by Dorge. Rebound. Foul on Pinder. 
Gee, both teams are uh, wound up fairly tight at this stage. Uh, Mike Ellis had a wide open shot. There you can see Pinder. It's a very cheap foul. He was unlikely to get the ball. He brings up his first foul, and it's the first foul in the game. Obviously, the first foul on the Perth Wildcats. Darren Rowe. Jim Bateman inside. Still no score. Alan Duellis to Grace. Crawford just working the ball around inside to Allen who Perth are expecting big things from this year back to Mike Ellis 10 second warning Pinder Grace inside Allen can't make it Bateman to Bournes and Geelong away we might have our first nil all draw if things keep going this way well this must be some sort of a record not often you see two minutes go by in a game of basketball at this level without a score. This will be the first one. Brian Bond, nicely fed inside, brings up the first two points of the game. Two points. The Supercats draw first blood. Walking foul called that time on Brian Bonds as they tried to double team Mike Ellis at half court, putting two players on the ball. Bonds didn't quite establish position in front of Ellis and picked up a foul from the side. Ellis pinned it back to Ellis to set it up. Crawford was under the basket for a moment, but now out near the three-point line. Jeff Allen inside. Well done there by Rowe. Grace tried to draw a foul. Allen inside. Goaltending. Jeff Allen put that ball up off the backboard, and then John Dorge interfered with it, so the two points count. Shane Hill. Vaughan's under the basket. Foul on Ellis. Pass was a little bit late coming in from Shane Hill. Uh, Brian Vons had worked himself open. As you can see, the foul there, Ellis into the back of Vons. But Vons was open a substantial, for a substantial amount of time and wasn't spotted by Hill. Darren Rhodes and Bateman. Couldn't make it. Jeff Allen very strong under the basket. Bateman picking up a similar to Pinder's foul. Not really a foul that a coach likes to see. It wasn't going to accomplish much. And uh, our early vision at uh, Allen, certainly he appears to have all the uh, qualities of a, of a glass eater. He likes to go after those defensive rebounds. That's Allen with the ball there. Searching inside, Pinder trying to post up on, on Bateman, but he's uh, got his foot in the key and uh, got called for three seconds in the key violation. Was in there a long time. Not much of him, but enough of him. Shane Hill, who will do a lot of the work for the Super Cats tonight. Brian Vaughan's, Bateman and Pinder, two strong bodies against one another. They've known each other for a long period of time. They don't need to get acquainted. They instantly go out there and bump chest and will do it all night long. Rowe, Dorge, and oh. couldn't make it. Crawford. Just slow it down for the moment to Ellis. And now Perth will set it up. Both teams missing a lot of what you would think are point blank shots. First game of the season, obviously they're both fairly, very tightly wound. Heel nicely cutting off Grace to the baseline, but Grace pops back away from him and hits a little left-hand jumper. Perth leading 4-2. Against Vaughns. Vaughns called with a double dribble that time, and with the high dribble, he just let it come to rest in two hands very, very briefly. But that's against the rules, so it's a violation, and Perth gets the ball. James Crawford, number two in the NBL on the all-time scoring list. One of the legends of the game. Ricky Grace, who might make a name for himself. Crawford, and makes it. So Perth go to 6-2. And pressing up here, but give uh, Jeff Allen big credit for that. He flipped that ball from the low post, cross-quartered it. And uh, if you can do that, direct the traffic, that pass through the low post, man. It's very difficult to guard him away from the ball. Darren Rowe. Two points count. Barry Barnes, coach of the Geelong Supercats. Alan Black, his counterpart for Perth. And he looked a bit disappointed there. Well, he shouldn't. The two points counted, so uh, Darren Rowe driving to the basket had started, had left the ground to start a shooting action, was fouled, and uh, so the two points do count, and he gets one to come here. The bonus foul shot, and hits that. 
So Geelong closer to a point. The race with a quick breakaway. That's a charge. Grace using tremendous speed to screen down the court. Made one mistake in his calculation. John Dorch was just sailing under the basket. You can see Dorch set in his path prior to Grace leaving the ground, and Grace belted into him. So it was the first foul on Ricky Grace. But the exciting thing there was the acceleration from Grace. Boy, he showed us smoke. Row. Dorch. Still Dorch. Crawford very strong under the basket to Ellis. Quick breakaway by Perth. Ellis very well done to Allen. Rowe chips in. Oh, that all happened so very fast. What a series of great plays. Good defense by Allen at the other end. Really talked Dorge out of two shots. The fast break generated the other way. Looked like Allen was going to have the easy two shots. And out of nowhere came Darren Rowe to swat it away. Trevor Torrance into the game. Instantly into the scorebooks. Tiny pinder off for Trevor Torrance. 8-5, Perth lead. Shane Hill, lost control. Dribbles. Lost his dribble, picked it up in two hands and dribbled again. And that was a very clear violation by Shane Hill. So the uh, Supercats, three points in arrears to the Wildcats. And uh, been a very slow opening, but we can't say it hasn't been without interest. Timeout coming soon. Mark Ellis to Torrance. Allen. Just tried a cute little one to Crawford, he didn't appreciate it. Throw. Throw from the three-point line. Bateman underneath and scores. So it's eight to seven. Perth the point in front. Wildcats lead the Supercats. Ellis sets it up. The captain, Torrance, has Grace from the three points. Oh. Oh. James Crawford. Too much doubt about that. A reasonably high percentage shot as he slams back the missed shot. This time, Dorge looking out. If he should have flipped that cross court, Bateman was open. He'll knock down a three pointer. So the first National Super Cats are right in this one. So 10 all Super Cats and Wildcats in this opening quarter. We've got a timeout now. certainly is and the way Grace broke that full court pressure really he's got some quickness Bonds this time has the ball slapped away Grace again in the open court foot race with heel heel steps up and into him clear foul but probably a point saving foul at that stage by Shane Heel because uh, the speed with which Grace was going he was doing nothing but going by him so a uh, good foul, actually, because it's only the third team foul on Geelong. So instead of the layup, they get to take the ball in from the side. Eric Watterson, who's replaced Mike Ellis in the timeout. Trevor Torrance. Tries a long run. And two points. Both teams applying full court pressure. Watterson harassing Heel. Heel breaks it with a pass. Bateman, good defensive transition by the Wildcats, getting back cutting off the quick lay and attack and now the Supercats will set it up through Vaughan's to Bateman Hill working for him Hill from three oh. points and does it for the second time he knows this court I think well he knows where the basket is Bill he likes those long shots and the Geelong fans like Rowe highway robbery on Grace that time Rowe kicks it off the heel good play from the Supercats well, amazing Grace won't like that too much. No, that was a pure pinchery. That was, again, the full court pressure by the uh, Geelong First National Supercats. Watterson breaks it with the dribble, dishes into Torrance. He's smacked, and I think Rowe will pick up that one. And he does. With Geelong leading 15-14. So after a rather quiet opening, this game has really come alive. Shaking off the cobwebs at the start of the game. Trevor Torrance, fouled in the act of shooting, gets two foul shots. Makes his first one. Of course, foul shots counting only one point. Has a chance to bring up his sixth point in the game and does. And gives the Wildcats a one-point lead, 16-15. Heel, Bateman on the break. Has Vaughns. Goes all the way himself and makes two points. Geelong lead, 17-16. Now Watterson. 
snared by Hill. Rowe, this should be very easy. It is, as he makes a big slam dunk, and the fans love it. Supercats getting some uh, percentage work out now out of their press. That's better from the Perth Wildcats, breaking it with the pass rather than the dribble, but Crawford will get called with a charging foul. Dorge again lurking underneath that basket, but the ball was out of his hand before the contact occurred, so the two points have counted, but Crawford picks up his first foul as well. Geelong lead 19-18. So we'll see the foul shots at the other end because the ball was out of his hand, so the two points count, but with no, neither team in possession of the ball, the penalty then comes into play at the other end. So John George will go to the line shooting one-on-one -on -one and can neutralize that lovely play from James Crawford by hitting both of them. Makes the first. Bruce Holtman has come on for Jim Bateman for the Supercats. And again, 21-18. Tiny Pinder looking on. Much Great. better press breaking, using the pass that time, Perth, rather than trying to break it from the dribble. Now they'll set up their attack with Geelong back in his own defense. Crawford, Torrance at the top of the key. Waterson, Allen, Miss Crawford very strong heel and can make a break here with Vaughan's wide now Vaughan slows it Dorge underneath the basket another two points Geelong get a little break Bill 23-18 great pass by Brian Vaughan's that time a real no peaky pass threaded the needle to Dorge had no trouble making the lay in Perth disposing of the uh, press that time very easy but not being able to punish Geelong for pressing by getting easy, easy baskets at the other end Grace Torrance Aaron Rowe picking up that one. That's his second with three minutes and nine seconds remaining to play in the first quarter. Coach Barry Barnes won't like that. Fairly light contact there, but clearly the contact was the fault of the defense, not the offense. Referees may well have let that go, but they chose that it did uh, stop Torrance's passage to the basket. And he is certainly on fire at the moment with seven points. It's seven from seven. Will this be eight from eight? It is. And a Perth within three points. Alan Black. Coach. Oh, the Perth Wildcats as heel to Holtman. Again with heel. Both have been substituting very freely, Bruce. We see Steve Davis into the lineup now. As well as Holtman, as you say. Three-pointer from Holtman. Nothing but net. There's the trap at half court again. Watterson uh, keeping presence of mind, keeps control of the ball, but Crawford can't handle it. Just slightly uh, came off Heel's hands, and Crawford didn't adjust for the change in angle, spilled off him out of bounds. Three-pointer from Heel, do you mind? Uh, and Eric Watterson said, I don't, I'll take the rebound. To James Crawford, who's back in his old territory. Eric Watterson, Ricky Amazing Grace. Hot shot recruit. Not this time. Rowe did very, very well. Holcrum, will he score? No. Heel misses it. And a wasted chance. Fantastic rebound by Darren Rowe at the other end. He just went right up over the top of Torrens and plucked it out of midair. So the Supercats with their backs up now, and uh, it's uh, the favorite team in the league this year is not having its own way by any means at the early stages with two minutes left to go in the first quarter. Stephen Davis, Trevor Torrance, John Dorge again. Will he'll go all the way? No, Waterson did very well, but it's a Supercats ball. Excellent chasing by Eric Waterson that time. He'll had the lead in the foot race. Didn't cleanly handle the ball and push it in front of him. Waterson was able to just dispossess him at the last second. Perth going into a little huddle, obviously setting their defensive strategy. All five together there. Tiny Pinder shouting out instructions. And they're all pointing in about every angle of the compass. So hopefully they all realize what they're doing. That's Rowe with the ball up over the top. He buys it. And the Supercats stretch their lead to eight. Ricky Grace, tiny pinder on for James Crawford. Grace makes two. At capital C for class. Shane Heal.
Bruce Holcrum. Jim Bateman trying to work inside against Pinder. Still with Bateman. John Dawes. Bateman taps it back. Rowe. He's got a couple of fouls against him, but has done a couple of spectacular moves tonight. One when he robbed Ricky Grace. We won't forget that in a long time. Bateman back to Rowe. Not this time. And it'll be a Wildcats ball, but they trail 22-28. Grace again, pass from Watterson, dishes to Steve Davis, that's a goal 10. Second goal 10 in the game to John George. And we'll count that basket to uh, Steve Davis. Mass substitutions, Bruce Hope into the game, replacing Shane Hill, we see getting congratulated by coach Barry Barnes, that's Bruce Hope there. Brian Vaughn's back into the game as well, having had about a three or four minute rest. Mike Ellis coming back for the Wildcats. Here's Bruce Hope. First touch of the basketball tonight. Brian Vaughan gets into a shooting position. Pinder under the basket. Good help that time by Perth. Vaughan's getting by his man, but plenty of defensive help from the Wildcats to stop his pass into the basket. Grace dishing to Davis. And uh, we're seeing a bit of the magic that they've been talking about out west from Ricky Grace. Holcrum, Bateman, two points, 30-26, Supercats lead the Wildcats. Mike Ellis to set it up for Perth. Trevor Torrance, Ellis, Grace, long shot. Pinder. Who pulled who down? The referee Ian Watts adjudicating. Foul was on John Dorge. That's only his first one. So to the line, we'll see Tiny Pinder. He certainly didn't mind helping the referee see that foul. And uh, he was fouled in the act of shooting, so he'll get two foul shots. Pinder hits his first one. That's his first point in the game. Background, Ricky Grace and Coach Alan Black setting the defense. After this made basket, they probably will press up. Yes, they do. There's the full court pressure. Of course, playing defense over the whole period of the floor means that you're playing full court defense. It's called a press. And uh, it causes a turnover that time, but it's, it's judged that it's just been, although Bruce Hope touched it, the Wildcat player touched it after him. And so the Wildcats get the ball in from the side, setting their offense. With less than 10 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Vaughns. Foul on Steve Davis that time. Good quick move by Vaughns. Looked like he was going to charge Davis for a second, but uh, regained his balance and slipped to the side of him, and Davis fouled him as he was shooting. So going to the line now, Brian Vaughns. Scoreless in the game so far. Sorry, he has two points in the game. Has a chance to make it four, but he won't get there that way. On the bench, Andrew Parkinson and uh, Darren Rowe. Rowe with two fouls to his name, has to be a little bit cautious. So with four seconds remaining, and still with Geelong, Vaughan tries a three-pointer. And after a frantic first quarter, The first quarter it was interesting to, to look at the turnover statistics for Perth. They've got seven turnovers, which is a very high count and reflects the effectiveness of the Geelong press and probably the reason why Geelong has this slender three-point lead going into the second quarter. They had that lead out to eight at one stage, but Perth were able to get it back to three before quarter time. Jim Rowe to Jim Bateman. Oh, that'll be a foul on John Dorge, rebounding from behind. See the value of Jim Bateman. He's not a jumper by any means. He isn't exactly a sprinter either, but he uses his body exceptionally well around the basket, has a few little clever moves, and is able to use his bulk to get around his man and get an open shot. Haven't been dropping for him too well so far. Ricky Grace from Mark Ellis. Back with the captain. Trevor Torrance. Missed for a change. Grace chips in. 
and uh, the little man makes two points from under the basket. That's what gives the uh, coaches gray hairs with the smallest guy on the floor. They've got all their big guys in there, but the little guy chips in for a lay-in off a missed shot. Rowe with the ball working on Torrance down to the baseline. Blocked that time by Davis, but Rowe recovers. Nine points now to Darren Rowe to be the leading scorer for the Supercats. Grace again, fancy drive down the middle, dished off to Davis, and uh, but for some uh, last minute dramatics from the Supercats, Davis would have had a lay in there. And Mike Ellis has Ricky Grace. Trevor Tones, Grace top of the key. Pinder, and scores. So it's a one-point ball game. Perth not coming out in their press this uh, quarter. Bruce probably settling in now for the... Uh, they were trying to get out there in the shock troops early. I think now they're settled into uh, what will be, I think, a very long game. Looking for the long-term result, obviously. Brian Bonds that time had the ball knocked out of bounds. So the Supercats inbounding from the side. To John Dodge. Shane Hill tries another three points. Likes him. <laughs> Says I got a little spot here on the floor. I just like to go to that. Supercats maintaining their pressure. Full court zone press. Two on one created at the other end. Davis misses what he should have made but follows it in. So that's how you break a press. You pass over the top of those four men in the backcourt. It's going to be automatic advantage at the other end. Back to a four-point game. 38-34. Darren Rowe making it. Timeout called. A substitution. And David Close coming out for the Perth Wildcats. This is a new rule in the league that uh, the team, when it's been scored on, can affect a substitution when they're taking the ball out of bounds from the from the end line. And uh, this is the first game that this rule has uh, come into play. And the first time that Ricky Grace has had a break, replaced by David Close. He's a really impressive player so far, isn't he, Ricky Grace? His three-pointers haven't dropped as much as he would have liked, but they weren't far away. He looks like he knows what he's doing there. A few wild shots from the Wildcats. Pinder eventually tripping back out of bounds, and Geelong gets the ball. Another turnover to the Wildcats, and their number in that column continues to grow. Darren Rowe, John Dodge, Shane Hill. Oh. Wasn't quite on that paint spot as he was before. Too close, Bill. Wanted to be about to half a meter further Yes, back. I think so. The technical foul was called on Shane Heal. Probably said a little bit in his disappointment. Uh, missing that three-pointer might have just spoken up a little too loudly. So the uh, Perth Wildcats get to go to the other end, shoot two foul shots, and elect the player that they want to shoot those foul shots. For Heal, that technical foul also counts on his personal foul count, and he's up to two fouls in the game. Mike Ellis to take the foul shots. James Crawford and Jeff Allen back on the court for the Wildcats. So back to three points in the game. Will Mike Ellis make it a two-point game? He does. So costly there by Shane Heal. No not only getting a foul against his name, but uh, two points to the Wildcats. Turns Pinder inside out, then Bateman. Misses Bournes under the basket and makes the two points. So the new recruit for Geelong doing very well. Ellis, Pinder, Allen, back to the basket to Ellis. Wildcats being a little bit more conservative in how they're breaking that press. Obviously concerned about their foul count. They're happy to break it and then set up Pinder with a rainbow that hits nothing but net. 40-38. Bateman. They've got to drop. Those shots have got to drop for Jim Bateman in Geelong. He gets the ball back. Can he make amends? Yes, he can. Jim Bateman gives... The Supercats, a four-point break, but that's a wildcat ball. They're still bothering him in the backcourt there, Bruce, with their press. Uh, Geelong hasn't been totally secure in their handling of the ball, streaming up to the half-court line. And uh, as long as it keeps working, you may as well keep running it. And David Close, Mike Ellis, off to James Crawford. Will he make two? Yes. Likes that backcourt. 
Ten points now to Crawford, becoming the first uh, Wildcat into double figures. Darren Rowe and Shane Hill both have 11 for the Supercats. Bateman back to Rowe. Under the basket to Bateman. Well done by Jeff Allen, who's looked very useful, Bill. The other recruit for the Wildcats. Yes, without being flashy, he's a hard worker in there. Very, very solid around the basket. He's a big boy and knows how to use his weight and muscle and uh, has excellent timing. There are not going to be any gimme baskets around the hoop when he's around there. Grace and Allen, the two recruits, Perth looking so much forward to having for this year. Vaughns tries a cute one to Dodge, didn't come off. Not a lot, lot of percentage in that. Right. Ellis. Perth had seen that play before for sure. Pinder, oh, nearly rocking back out of bounds. Crawford can't handle it. Again, the ball handling from Perth and execution not very precise at this stage. Crawford up over the tops, intimidated a little bit in his shot by Brian Vaughns, who went right up after him. That's Vaughns with the ball now. Looking for an opportunity, nothing there, and he'll give the ball back to Rowe now to set up. Rowe says, I won't set up, I'll go to the hoop. Thank you very much. What's this set up stuff? And why not, Bill, when you can score like that? 44 to 40. Darren Rowe up to 13 points, leading scorer in the game. Crawford from close. Ellis, who spent a lot of time at the top of the key tonight. Pinder, close. Oh, and makes it for three points. Well, that's very, very handy to, to get out of your, your guards hitting those three pointers. So we substitution in close uh, leaves the game wrapped in glory after that three pointer and it's replaced by the team captain Mike Ellis. Andrew Parkinson on for the Supercats. Shane Hill there, guard. Parkinson immediately into the game. Perth standing back in the zone challenging the outside shooters from the Wildcats, or from the Supercats. Got a lot of felines out there on the floor <laughs> today. Pinder knocks that loose. Ellis is going to get it. And good play. That was a forced turnover that time. Good defense by the Wildcats. And they now take the lead by one point, 45 to 44. After Geelong led by eight points at one stage in the first quarter. So Perth have done very well. Rowe. Bateman, loose ball still. Who's that on in there? Pretty big crowd in there. Referees tonight, Ian Watts and Bill Mildenhall, Jeff Allen in screen. Foul was that time was on uh, uh, Ricky Grace, his second. And the ball was bouncing around, but uh, Perth has come out in a unusual front zone. It's a 1-3-1 zone. Grace is actually running along the baseline playing defense, and they're obviously putting a lot of pressure in the guard pocket and the baseline pocket, trying to double team. Jim Bateman hitting his first foul shot of two. This to put Geelong a point in front. Pinder says, give me that. And then gives it to Ellis. The score's tied again. Geelong not taking a step backwards at all against this favored team. Grace up over the top, can't find it. Ball bounces around. Grace, it bounces to Grace on the floor. Amazing Grace saves that one. Pinder with another rainbow. Misses that time. Crawford cleans up. Perth getting the offensive rebounds and getting a number of shots each time they're coming down the floor using their great spring out there. That advantage is holding forth at the moment. Grace, lovely penetrated drive. Up to eight points, Ricky Grace. And really making an impression, Perth lead by two, Jim Bateman, who's had nine points oh. in the game. And that was a great shot from Jim Bateman. He spun and shot at the same time, releasing the ball just as Allen's coming across. Look at this spin here. Firstly, as quick as he can sight the ring, bodied up by Allen, puts the two points in and gets the bonus foul shot. Looks a lot quicker uh, in real time, too, than it did in uh, slow motion. It really was a quick move. He knew exactly where the ring was and turned line, and flipped that ball off the backboard. But misses his foul shot, so it got a little bit sour for him. Scores tied again, 47 apiece. Ellis to Grace, the two guards together. This is the glamour recruit from the United States to another American recruit in Allen. 
Foul that time on Brian Vons. Let's see if the referees call it a shooting foul. They do, so Allen will go to the line shooting two. Question there is, had Allen attempted to start, start his shot? And the answer is yes, because there he is on the line shooting two. Looking on, he had a very good first quarter, Trevor Torrance. Had eight points in the first quarter. Jeff Allen puts the Wildcats a point up on the Supercats. Five minutes remaining in this second quarter. Wildcats staying in this 1-3-1 zone. And so far, the uh, Supercats are just passing the ball around the perimeter and not penetrating into the gaps. Against the zone, you want to get, get the ball between two players if you can. Parkinson, Allen says, sorry, the shop's closed on that one. And Perth now has a chance to expand on their one-point lead. Another rainbow by Pinder, and he's showing a lot of accuracy. Eight points for Tiny Pinder as the Wildcats lead by three. Darren Rowe, Shane Hill. Well, the wheels haven't come off for Geelong, but... Uh, Good timeout called that time, Bruce, by Barry Barnes. As you did, he sensed that the momentum was quickly simping away from the Supercats. He's called a timeout to settle him down with the Perth Wildcats leading 50 to the Geelong Supercats, 47. And here. Well, Cal Bruton knows what it's like to be in Geelong. He and James Crawford played for this uh, team not too many years ago. And Cal would be reasonably happy with what's going on. General manager of the Perth Wildcats. He sees his team. Three points in front. Shane Hill to Brian Vaughan. Darren Rowe, will he make a three-pointer? No. I'm sure that the Perth Wildcats would love Darren Rowe to stay out there behind the three-point line. That's where you get hurt is that penetration, getting the ball inside of the 1-3-1 zone. I might describe that for you. A 1-3-1 zone means that there's a player at the top of the key guarding the zone areas. We see Bateman coming in and getting fouled from the side. And uh, there's one player at the top of the key. Then there's three in a line across the foul line. Of course, that, that uh, responds a little bit to the position of the ball and the position of the players. And Ricky Grace, the little guard, is running along the baseline. And that zone, it just gives you, you have to attack it from different angles as you would a, a normal zone, which basically has two in front, one in the middle, and two behind. You'll Jim be tested on this later, Bruce. <laughs> taking it all down, Bill. Jim Bateman makes two from the foul line, takes his uh, personal total of 13. So he's tied Darren Rowe in that uh, respect and brings the Supercats within a point of the Wildcats. We might make mention that Tiny Tinder picked up his third personal foul. So with three minutes and 50 seconds remaining to play before halftime, Alan Black would be considering resting him. Alan inside, he barged his way in, no score. He barreled over Jim Bateman, picks up his second foul. And uh, the determination was, as Alan Black disputes the call, that uh, Alan hadn't released the ball yet, so even though the, the shot went in, it's disallowed. So it's still a one-point game. You see that zone there, Ellis on top, the three in line as we see. Heel shooting him out of total. Now they won't want to see, I was saying they wouldn't mind Darren Rose shooting for three points. They won't like Shane Hill getting a good look from out there. The fourth time tonight he's done it and has put the Supercats two points in front. Ellis to Grace. Yes. So three to Ricky Amazing Grace. He's up to 11 points. So the two guards are having some fun from the three-point line tonight. Shane Hill and Ricky Grace. Now will Shane try it again? Not this time. He nearly did a do a diddy step on that one. He was probably lucky not to get a travel call. That penetration inside the baby. That's what kills his own great pass to Darren Rowe. And Jim Bateman up to 15. Geelong to 54. As we see the replay. That's what kills his own. That penetrative pass inside. We see uh, Jeff Allen getting a rest now. Geelong picking up. Three minutes exactly to go before halftime. And the Supercats hanging on. It's a foot violation. And uh, no foul there called. It's just an automatic uh, out of bounds to Perth as Bond used his foot illegally. Trevor Torrance, Mark Ellis, Tiny Pinder tried to 
lay it off to James Crawford. Darren Rowe pulls for Shane Hill to make some ground. Another three point. Will he make it? Oh, oh, yes, he does. That's a fifth time in the first half. This has been an exciting performance. And Shane Hill's up to 17. Foul on Andrew Parkinson taking some of the sting out of uh, Hill's fifth three pointer. For the uh, Geelong team, that's their third team foul. So we've got a timeout now with two minutes and 30 seconds remaining to play in the corner. And the Geelong Supercats have fought back to the front, 57 to the Perth Wildcats, 53. Welcome back as the Wildcats trail the Supercats by four points. Two and a half minutes remaining in this first half. Ricky Grace. Trevor Torrance. Off the basket. Jim Bateman, Shane Hill, who has set this stadium alight with five three-pointers in the first half. Jim Bateman. Parkinson, not this time. Crawford snatches it from Pinder and gives it to his captain, Mike Ellis. Ellis with the ball. Geelong falling back in the zone. Ellis kicks it out to Grace. Three-point attempt. Can't buy it. Parkinson gets the rebound. Geelong sweeping back up the court. Chain Hill calling the play. Let's check out the Perth defense. It has changed now. They're in a man-to-man -man alignment, so they've got out of that zone defense. Vaughn weaves his way into the basket, crashes into Pinder, who had set up a camp uh, uh, in there, and he gets called with a charging foul. Let's take a look here. As we see Vaughn's coming in, you can see Pinder was there, established on the on the floor well before Vaughn's left the ground. And uh, for him now, that's his third personal foul. And the Super can still hold on to this four-point lead with a minute, 35 seconds remaining to play before halftime. Trevor Torrance, who's scored eight points tonight and did all that in a hurry when he came on in the first quarter. Ricky Grace, James Crawford, again with Torrance, gets inside. Didn't make it. Grace, very good for a little man. Looked like he might have been interfered with, but no foul. Parkinson, Ellis, and the Geelong bench like it. And they like it a lot. Well, that was a great play by young Parkinson there. He uh, looked like he might have lost the foot race here. We're seeing the tail end of that, but he did a great job threading that ball out between some Wildcats. Brian Vaughn's taking a rest now. We see the penalty situation coming into play with the Wildcats with five team fouls. So Parkinson gets a one and one. He makes the first one, which he did. He now gets a second one. And a very handy lead here. Five points just before half time. Will Andrews stretch it to six? He does. So a great play there by Andrew Parkinson and takes maximum advantage. Ellis to Torrance on a quick breakaway. Geelong regroup. Back to the skipper. Ricky Grace. Didn't make it. Crawford. Couldn't control it. Heel to row. Things just working a little for Geelong. Oh, crash of bodies there. Collision. Let's take a look at it now. I think they're probably going to call Mike Ellis for stepping up and into him. Close play here. Yes, that's a good call. You can see Rowe with his head and shoulders pass him. It was a good, uh, good little bump there. Ellis picking up his third personal foul. And again, we see the one-on-one -on -one situation coming into play. Darren Rowe with 13 points in the game. So a wasted chance here for Geelong. Could have made two. Gets zip. And it's 59-53. Mike Ellis. Ricky Grace. Into the last minute of the first half. Perth would love to get that lead whittled down. I'd like to be right up alongside of Geelong at half time. Getting slightly frustrated because they haven't been able to kick the ball out and play their open court fast break game. They've had to play a lot of half court stuff. And... Uh, Geelong has done an excellent job just sort of gluing things up. Crawford saves the ball. Stops, gives it to Grace who flips it off. He misses it. He took looked at Rowe. Rowe expected Rowe to go up after the ball, but Rowe stayed on the ground. Now the Supercats can work for one shot with 15 seconds remaining to play before halftime. So D Darren Rowe just working for the one shot. Down to six seconds on the clock. We better start thinking about it. Rowe, Bateman will have to hit this one. Doesn't. There's the Hooter. And at halftime, the Geelong Supercats lead. That man's team, Alan Black's Perth Wildcats by 59 points to 53.
And welcome back to the arena in Geelong with the news at halftime. The Geelong Supercats 59 lead the Perth Wildcats 53. Six-point margin. Here's Bill Palmer with the coach of the Perth Wildcats, Alan Black. Alan, it's not much time before the second half starts, but you'd probably be reasonably disappointed in your fellows couldn't connect on close shots and didn't handle the ball very cleanly. No, no, they, their press worked fairly well. We expected them to press, and I thought we'd handle that a lot better. We missed about four or five easy shots that could have put them away. Well, you've come from behind in almost all your preseason games, haven't you? Now it's the real time. The, you obviously have plenty of reserve, a deep bench. We do, and we're ready to go. Best of luck in the second half, Alan Black. Back to you, Bruce. Bill Palmer with the coach of the Wildcats, Alan Black. James Crawford is one of the enduring characters in the NBL. Let's see if he'll have a big second half as we take a break from the arena in Geelong. Start of the second half here. It's George versus Crawford and the First National Supercats with a six-point lead. But the first possession goes to the Perth Wildcats. That's Ellis with the ball. Grace guarded by Shane Heal. The uh, Supercats start off in a man-to-man -man defense. Pinder has the ball slapped away from him by Bateman. But Ellis recovers. Ten seconds count coming up on the shot clock. There it is. Allen has the ball tossed into him, but it came off John Dorge. The pass was well and truly astray, but Dorge just reached in. But the 30-second clock won't be reset. There's eight seconds on it, so the Wildcats have eight seconds to shoot. Allen with the ball, long way, count going down. Does Grace know he must? Three-pointer, it goes down. Brilliant play by Ricky Grace with only a couple seconds remaining on the shot clock. Brings up his 14th point. Bateman with the ball. Around the key, inside to Dorge. He's been quiet offensively. Row now. Dorge guarded by Allen, kicking it out to Bateman. Comes down the middle, can't find it. Allen cleans up for him. Slapped away by Dorge, and the Supercats recover. Peel with another three-pointer. He was five for seven from the three-point line. Is now five for eight as the Wildcats get the ball. Captain Mark Ellis. So that six-point margin down to three. Alan Black will be looking for a big third quarter here. Cole. Cole and Darren Rowe, that's his third in the two points count. Very athletic play by James Crawford, bringing up his 12th point. Fouled in the air, changed his shot, rode through the, rode through the physical contact, banged it off the backboard, and then countered, and he gets the bonus foul shot for being fouled in the act of shooting. Well, that foul shot never looked likely at all, Bruce. Supercats now. Brian Barnes with the ball. Five points in the game for him. Coach Barry Barnes be looking to get a little bit more offense from Brian Barnes, one would have thought. Peel now with the ball. Guarded very closely by Ricky Grace. Grace, a very good defensive player. Face guarding Heel that time, but not making contact. Rowe this time, guarded by Crawford. Can't control the ball. Five seconds to shoot on the clock. Rowe has to force the three-pointer. Can't find it. Now, Grace, look at the speed of this man. Kicking off to Crawford. There's a collision away from the ball, but Crawford buries the two points. We've got a one-point lead now to the Wildcats. Crawford up to 14 points. And the Wildcats have come out smoking and have shocked Geelong a little, but Bateman makes two, and he goes to 17, having a very good match. They needed that basket. Bruce, it was the first two points in the game for him after over two minutes. In that two minutes, the Wildcats have been able to uh, neutralize the lead they had at halftime. But the Supercats now back to a one-point lead. Grace to Ellis inside the key. And against the Wildcats captain, Alan Black can't believe it. Three, three seconds in the key called on Jeff Allen. You can't be in that area that's out outlined just below the foul line when your team has the ball for more than three seconds at a time. The referee counted a bit more than that, so blew the whistle. It's not a foul, it's just a violation, but Geelong has the ball. With Shane Hill, who, as Bill mentioned, had a sensational first half from the three-point line, making five for seven. Jim Bateman works round, misses. With Bateman's great advantage, he really often shoots that ball awkwardly in the middle of the key. If he doesn't make it, he keeps his momentum going towards the basket and often picks up the scraps from his own missed shot. A real hustler. Rowe 
Vaughan. Still no two points, so Vaughan's with just five points in the game. Now Grace, with a great breakaway to Ellis. Superb play by Rowe. Vaughan has heel outside of him. Goes all the way. Doesn't make it. Dord should clean up for two. Can't do it. Crawford. Now Vaughan. Whose ball will it be? It'll be Vaughan's came from out of bounds to collect that ball. Geelong really should have made a basket there. I think so. Particularly John Dorge with the follow shot. He probably, instead of fading away, really could have pushed it in off the backboard. And uh, the Super Cats clinging to the slender one-point lead. And that ball's hit the support, so they'll get the ball back. Ricky Grace, prize recruit for the Perth Wildcats this season. He hasn't really been able to take full advantage of that obvious superior speed he has because the defense up the court by the Supercats has been very gluey indeed. Rowe forcing one. Can't find it. Everybody up above the ring. Over the top foul called on Darren Rose. He chased the ball in. That's his fourth, and he's in big trouble. And so are the Supercats. They can't afford to have him. Look at this play above the ring. There's lots of hands up there. And they just say that uh, Darren Rowe got into the back of Jeff Allen, and he'll have to take a rest with four. Of course, five personal fouls, and you rest uh, for the rest of the game. And uh, it'll be a very crucial decision now when Barry Barnes chooses to bring back in Darren Rowe, who's been the strike force for them. He's got 13 points, all of which were in the first half and uh, quite a few rebounds as well. Allen losing the ball. Peel leads the race. Ellis doesn't go for him, had no angle on it. And so Shane Heal brings up his 19th point. And the 63rd for the Geelong Supercats. Crawford, back to Ellis. Tiny Pinder with a rainbow shot. Not this time. Brian Vaughan. Remembering Darren Rowe off at the moment with four fouls. Can come back on, but has only one left. Andrew Parkinson on for him. Jim Bateman couldn't control it. And Geelong lose a chance. Wasn't a bad pass that time from Bruce Holkren. Bateman tried to reel it in with one hand, uh, thinking about his move and assumed that possession would be there, but uh, he was wrong. Jeff Allen back to Mark Ellis. Allen just taking a little while to get settled into this game tonight. Oh, come on. Some steeplejacking going on in there. Really, this team has shown, this game has shown flashes of brilliance, but it's also shown two teams very early on in their season preparation because the execution and the crisp Christmas of ball handling has really been missing from both teams. And uh, this game is quite likely to go right down to the wire. Perth obviously having more shock troops that they can bring in off the bench, which will favor them in the four-quarter game. Vaughn's kicking to heel, gathers control of the ball, and fakes it off the backboard, and then pleads with it to go down, and it does. 21 points for Shane Heal, having a very big match for Geelong. They lead by five. David Close, who came on for Ricky Grace. James Crawford inside. Allen makes this one. Back to three points. John Dorge finally cleans up. The Supercats lead the Wildcats 65 62. Shane Hill calling the shots as he has done all night. It's been a fascinating contest between the guards. Dorge just four courts so far tonight. Make that six, and that's a handy one. And for the Supercats to win, Bill, probably Vaughan's and George are going to have to give them some offence with the row out of the game at the moment. That's exactly right, Bruce. They will have to lift their offensive game, but really the, the Supercats have been doing a lot of this. Their lead is a lot due for their, their sticky defence, but it's causing a high turnover rate in the Wildcats. Crawford works. There's plenty of defensive players back there. They haven't been able to break open into their full court game. Ellis buries a three-pointer, and that was needed by the Super, by the Wildcats. So the captain up to seven. Thorns, not this time. A couple of uh, Wildcats under the basket. They lose it. A wrestling match there between Steve Davis and also Jeff Allen, and uh, lost the chance there, the Wildcats. Allen was a bit perturbed there, thought that uh, he'd been 
fouled by Dorge. Dorge had the ball and he tried to strip it back from. We've got a timeout here at the Ford Club Arena, which is Geelong Supercats leading 67, Perth Wildcats 65. Two point game at the arena in Geelong. The Supercats 67 against the Wildcats 65. Six minutes and 19 seconds left on the clock in this third quarter. Supercats ball. John Dorge. Shane Heal, who has been fantastic tonight. And he does it again. He's up to 24 points and has made six from the three point line. Mike Ellis. Wildcats want to bounce back in a hurry. Stephen Davis. Ellis. Allen. Robbed by Dorge. Heal. Will he try it again from the three point line? No to Vaughan's. Just slows it up a moment. George Hill, who has been in superb form tonight. Brian Vaughan's, John George goes in and out, and James Crawford makes the rebound. Crawford sucking that in and dribbling up the ball. The court showing his versatility. Ellis now, close behind the three-point line. Had a good chance to study it and buried it. And he's hit six points for the game from two three-pointers. Vaughn's with the ball now. He tries a three-pointer. That one doesn't stick. Allen cleans up. Gee, he looks big and tough when he goes after those rebounds. There's a real wide body out there. Davis this time with a 15-footer. Crawford cleans up, surrounded by blue shirts, and gives up and kicks it out. To close. Allen. Three. Supercat putting pressure on. Here. Will he make the two points? He should. And he does. Up to 26 points for the game. And the Supercats still lead by four. Very clever lay and used his body very well to shelter the ball from David Close that time. Foul on Dorge. Right into the back of Allen. His third foul. And uh, the Supercats really are doing an excellent job in taking the Wildcats out of their preferred style of game. Particularly in closing those passing lanes off inside. Barry Barnes just checking on how many personal fouls against John George, Ellis, Crawford. Trying to set himself up for a shot. Another three, three second violation called on Allen. Malingering a little bit in the key area. Bateman, ball movement from both teams a little bit slow. Bateman, one of those little moves of his around the basket where he uses his body exceptionally well. He's got 19 in the game. And uh, the Super Cats are really keeping their own momentum high as we say substitution in Ricky Grace back into the game for the Wildcats. For Mike Ellis, Grace with the ball. Wildcats trailing by six. No need to panic just yet. Foul but that, foul, foul that time on Holtrin. His first. Geelong's third team foul, fourth team foul in the quarter. And uh, there's still four minutes and 15 seconds remaining to play so that... Uh, the Supercats in the penalty situation. Any more fouls like that will result in one-on-one -on -one foul shooting by the uh, first Wildcats. Close. Allen. Davis works at the Grace. Vaughan's done very well. Lobs it from Grace. Then goes wide to heel. Blocked very cleverly by Grace. And Ricky Grace then showed his speed to get from one end of the court to the other after being robbed. And doing a similar job. Substitution. Jim Bateman getting a great hand, and so he should with 19 points tonight. He's hustled and bustled all night. John Dorge. Deal. Vaughan. Two points. Up to seven. And they need Brian Vaughan to make some points here. They lead by eight. Grace with pace. But Holtgren. And things just at the moment, Bill, are going with the Supercats. No question like that. The momentum's flowed back to them. Ricky Grace on the move all the time. No passing lane, so long as they have all night long. Been able just to get into those passing areas and deny those easy passes. And we see a foul from Parkinson, and this is where the bonus situation comes into play. They'll walk the 80-odd uh, feet to the other end of the court and shoot one-on-one -on -one after this timeout. With the scores now, the Geelong First National Supercats 76, the Perth Wildcats 68. Supercats with nine turnovers, Wildcats with 17. 
a very interesting statistics there. It reflects on Geelong's ability to clog up the passing lanes and slow down Perth from their running game. I think it's a very interesting statistic too because the Wildcats are winning the rebound battle 32 to 24. In normal circumstances with a low turnover count, they should be winning fairly easily at this stage. But of course the Supercat defense and the uh, and the purse probably Stat. not working terribly well uh, offensively with great execution has uh, reversed the result. Strength by Dodge to take it off Torrance. Seven point game, Supercats lead. Heel, who has been quite outstanding tonight, misses that one. Well, the Bill Middenhalls pointed uh, pointed the wrong way, but he clearly called yellow ball. So uh, the body movement was wrong, but the uh, the brain was working correctly that time. Close with the ball, guarded by Parkinson. There's two youngsters that we may hear about for many, many years to come. Gray's penetrating by heel. Parkinson reaches in. He was going up for the shot, so that foul will send Ricky Grace to the foul line, shooting two. Third foul on Parkinson. Seven point lead by the Supercats. Grace to knock that back to five. Grace with 14 points in the game so far. But, uh, showing tremendous value elsewhere around the court as well as his scoring. Three rebounds. function out there in the game it is uh, his primary function is deliver the ball up the floor and put it in the middle of the hoop as much as possible and he did that takes his score to 16 Parkinson heel George couldn't take it Torrance cleans up for the Wildcats so the Wildcats steady a little get within five as you feel this is a game of momentum you can feel that some of that momentum that uh, Supercats had going for them about two minutes ago is slowly disappearing. David Close knocks down his third three-pointer. That's nine in the game, all from three-pointers. Two points the difference, and again the tide has changed. Horns, Parkinson, not quite. Holcomb couldn't take it. Grace does, and it accelerates down the court. Bruce Holkman just strapped the saddle on him from the side coming down the court, picked up the foul, and Grace will go to the line shooting one-on-one, -on -one, has a chance to tie up the ball game. Uh, we missed the foul on the replay there, but uh, nevertheless, Grace will go to the line shooting one-on-one. -on -one. 17 foul for the Supercats, and it's costing them dearly. The one-on-ones will have really enabled the Wildcats to steady and get right back into this match. Well, Alan Black, in our halftime interview, was very confident that he had the horses to win the long race. And, uh, if they are to win, it will be right by weight of numbers that does it for them. Trading by one point. The Wildcats, 75. Supercats, 76. Jim Bateman, who has been one of the successes for Geelong tonight. Shane Heal, Andrew Parkinson, with David close attending, John Dorge, Grace hustling and bustling, Bateman inside makes it again, and takes his score to 21, so it's a big game for the veteran, Grace to Torrance, travel against the Wildcat, so still a three point game, minute 36 on the clock, and a vital period in the game here, if Geelong can steady and get a couple more points in front. It'll be a handy little break. Bateman. Gary Barnes screaming out from the bench that he wants them to make full use of the ball. They're doing it. They're eating up the clock. Heel misses a three-pointer, but Bateman again using his body. Comes out with the ball. Parkinson to heel to Bateman. They've got another 20 seconds on the clock. One minute to go before the end of the third quarter. Inside, fouled in the act of shooting by Ricky Grace. The two points will count. Third foul on Grace. 
So we saw the Supercats wear a charge of the, of the Wildcats and now have reestablished a slight bulge out there, six points. David Close has been deadly from the three-point line with three of them tonight. Hasn't tried too many and makes it a fourth. So it's 78-81. He's really matching Shane Hill's performance in that first half. Now Jim Bateman. He's been one of the really good big men on the court tonight. Not that time. Crawford whipped it off him. Gave it a close to Grace. Grace steadies. Close. Crawford. Grace. Oh, beautiful play to Torrance. Or Allen, I should say. Still not in the basket, though. And now Vaughan's with a chance for the Supercats. With 22 seconds remaining, they should set this up, leading by three. Heel, Parkinson. Must make full use of this. Bateman. He's confident out there. And makes it, Bill. And it's 84-78. Will the Wildcats get back two, maybe three points before three-quarter time? Clock stop. Substitution was called, should have been recorded before the uh, ball was brought in. No time went off the clock, so they, they got it right. Getting a new rule in the league. The team can substitute when it's scored upon. So the margin at halftime was six points. It's still six points with six seconds on the clock. Grace. Crawford. Didn't make it, George. And the Hooter goes. So at the end of the third period, in what could be a super upset, the Super Cats lead the Wildcats, 84-78. Welcome back to the arena. 12 minutes of top-level basketball left as Cal Bruton, the general manager of the Wildcats, looks on. And when he looks at the scoreboard, he sees the Wildcats six points behind. Ian Watts about to tip off the final quarter. He was chewing that gum pretty hard at the moment too. Well, so he should. The Wildcats just haven't been able to sort of break into any rhythm this game. Uh, credit should go to the Supercats defense, I think, primarily for not letting the Wildcats get out and run like they would most prefer to do. It's been a game of ebbs and flows, and mainly with the Supercats, who have led for almost the entire match. But what the Wildcats have been able to do in each of the quarters is start pretty quickly. And if the Supercats can stop them here and increase this lead in the early stages, it's going to make it very hard for Perth. And when will Barry Bruns bring on Darren Rowe, remembering he's got four fouls? Well, I think that he'll certainly wait to perhaps a little bit longer now. There's no, no reason to bring him in at this stage until he reads how the momentum's going in this final quarter. Nice haste to have up your seat. Another three-pointer by David Close. 15 points from five three-pointers. And he hasn't had very many more shots than that from the three-point line. Almost a 100% record. Shane Hill. Andrew Parkinson. This is where, this is where the, the numbers that the Wildcats can throw at you come into play. Fatigue starts becoming a factor, particularly this early in the season. Nice fake by George. Good fake, pumped Crawford way up into the air, went around for the easiest to play in. Takes his points up to 11, and it'll be a Perth ball. So bad luck there for Geelong. One thing Geelong's doing a little bit better now than they did certainly in the, in the first half and most of the third quarter is that they're contesting more evenly on the board. There's a classic misunderstanding between the point guard and the forward. We've got a... Substitution now called, so Darren Rowe, the ace in the hole, as it were, comes in. He rested uh, the first minute and a half, the fourth quarter. He's on four fouls. He'll have to be cautious. It'll be interesting to see who he picks up with his defensive assignment. Brian Vaughan's recruit this year, Dawes, but Grace does it well and should score two points. And does. He certainly did. The little man nearly brought down the backboard. I think he's going to bring down a few houses around the country this year. He is an exciting prospect. 19 points tonight. A very, very solid start to his NBL career. Bateman, Rowe. Now, Rowe's got to get full value out of himself here. Can't afford to foul and must make some offensive points. Dorge. And he's made it again. 
So Dodge has got himself up to 13 points, Bill, and has played a very good last 10 minutes or so. And he's not being intimidated by the high leapers on the Wildcats side. We've got a substitution. Again, the rule is not being administered very well its first time in. Obviously, that hooter should go as soon as the team scores and the substitute be effective. But we see subs now from both sides. And back into the game comes Mike Ellis, and uh, John Dorch takes the rest, and he did a very good period of play for the first two minutes of the fourth quarter. And the Supercats now slipping back into their zone defense. Pinder's corralled by Bonds. Ellis kicking the ball around the perimeter. Grace looking dangerous every time he touches the ball. Ellis with the three-pointer, can't buy it. Bateman using his body position to get the rebound in spite of Crawford being able to jump right over the top of him. Whoa. Inside the Vons, he's been quiet offensively, but done some good work defensively. That ball's come off a of Supercat, and the Wildcats will bring it in. They're five points in arrears with nine minutes and 20 seconds remaining to play. Mike Ellis, Ricky Grace, other side of the court to Torrance. Ellis, Grace. Foul called on Brian Vons. That's his fourth foul. Grace getting great penetration off the dribble. Thought he was home. Bonds came back over the top and collected him on the arm so that Ricky Grace will go to the line shooting two foul shots. That's the first team foul on Geelong this quarter. Of course, fouls enter into the game at this stage with players now getting on to four fouls. And obviously, the team getting into the penalty situation first is at a certain disadvantage. 20 points and four rebounds for Ricky Grace. And he doesn't miss many from the free throw line, and it's 88-85, three-point game. Shane Hill. How the Supercats have like another three-pointer from him in the next couple of minutes. Brian Vaughan. Bateman. At this stage, they need a percentage basket from anywhere just to steady down, just to rob, take a little of the wind out of Perth sales. As you do get the feeling that uh, Perth is slowly getting their composure and confidence back. Row inside, can't buy it. We've seen a poultice of point blankers missing. Ellis all the way to the basket and buys it. We've got a one-point ball game. Well, as Bill said, Geelong have just got to make a steady play here for a basket and get that momentum back. It's with Perth for the moment. Timeout as Perth Wildcats get within a point of the Geelong Supercats. It's 88-87. Eight minutes and 23 seconds remaining on the clock. Supercats 88-87. John Dorge back on for the Supercats. Has three fouls against his name. This man, Darren Rowe, has four, and so does Brian Vaughan. So Barry Barnes has to juggle a bit. But um, they lead by point with just over eight minutes remaining. Geelong has led for most of the night. They've surprised Perth with their endeavour. They've hustled and bustled. Vaughan's. Ooh, Tinder couldn't resist reaching in there, picking up his fourth foul. And Vaughan's was surrounded by gold shirts there. And uh, Tinder just couldn't resist that magnetic attraction of the leather. Drew him in. Got him firmly on Brian Vaughan's wrist. Two shots, fouled in the act of shooting. Why do coaches lose their hair? Fox, Fox, Fox! Fox, 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 Makes that. Just eight points for Brian Vaughan tonight. Two-point game. Ellis, Grace, Torrance. Ellis, top of the key. Torrance tries a three-pointer. Vaughan, rebound. Heel. Geelong need a percentage shot here, set it up, get themselves with that little buffer again. The Wildcats certainly aren't going to make it easy for them. Tipped out of bounds that time by Mike Ellis. 19 seconds remaining on the shot clock and 7 minutes and 45 seconds remaining on the game clock. In what has become a very intriguing struggle with the tide shifting and changing continuously. Air ball from Kurt at the front Darren Rowe, he can't believe that he missed it that far. Grace at the other end, no time to commiserate. 
inside again a good body work by the by the super cats they aren't up there above the basket like our Crawford and Pinder but they're getting that inside rebound position and getting the defensive boards which they lacked in the early part of the game Bateman Vaughn's inside Crawford and it's a super cap ball from the side Crawford climbing up into the rafters, timed that beautifully well. And the uh, Super Cats will get a new 30-second clock because the shot was out of Vaughn's hand. So they want to work it. They've got to find that percentage basket. Vaughn with a three-pointer, doesn't go. And the ball spills out of bounds. Pinder and Crawford spoil each other. Communication a little bit low on that one. And the Super Cats again get the ball and get the wind a little bit more off the clock. Rowe, George, Bateman. Not a lot of options at the moment. George Heal, who made five three-pointers in the first half. Vaughns, Heal, worked his way inside. And against the Supercats. It's a moving screen. Called on Brian Vaughns, I believe. That'll be his fifth. It's on Darren Rowe, excuse me, that is his fifth. So he managed about three minutes in the fourth quarter after being brought on with his fourth foul. That makes the Joe Supercat task a little bit harder, but they still have a two-point lead. 6.45 left on the clock. Perth desperate to get up alongside Geelong. Haven't really been able to head them all night. Crawford couldn't make the basket. Pinder did very well. Davis. Lee, hard George. body work around the basket. And the Supercats really making Perth earn every position, possession of the ball. Dorge working their flex offense now. We'll see the cutter come across the key. Down low, it's Bateman. Parkinson, that'll miss. Bounces out to heel. New 30-second clock. Ten, six minutes left to go in the game. It's getting exciting, Bill. Parkinson. Uh, must be the peanut, <laughs> peanut butter sandwich I hate. It's a long season, Bill. Hang on. Heel. Will he make three points? And Geelong really hoping at the moment, taking a lot of three-point shots, not playing the percentage. And will Ricky Grace tie the game up? Not this time. Vaughan's again, who's been strong under the basket, better defensively than offensively tonight. Takes Ellis on, but doesn't do very well. And it's the Wildcats again. Grace with pace to Ellis. And it's a Wildcats ball. Foul by Parkinson that time. His fourth foul to the line. Ricky Grace with two foul shots. He gets a chance to tie up the game. And really, this game is a game of wasted opportunity from both teams. Both teams have with a little bit of accuracy and a little bit of uh, clean ball handling could have uh, had commanding leads. But as it is, we've got a two-point ball game and now a one-point ball game as Mike Ellis talks in his 10th point. And ties it up at 89 apiece. So the pressure right on the Supercats here. Will he try for a three-pointer or set up something a little more orthodox? Vaughns. Bateman misses it. Pinder. He's got Ellis outside of him. Uses him. Will the captain make it? No. Bateman knocks it away and it'll be a Wildcats ball. All of a sudden, Bill, the options for Geelong in offense seem to have closed. Yes, well, they aren't targeting people at the moment. It looks like Geelong is hoping somebody else will do it for them. Where Perth, they're a lot more confident, though all the Perth players seem to want to be the one that does it. And it's that confidence in a game like this that often carries you home. Grace, he wanted the shot, didn't get it. Again, good defensive rebounding, tremendous positioning from the Supercats. Now let's see who gets the ball for the Supercats. Bateman probably should be the target at this stage. He and Pinder have had a real good battle inside. Bateman coming out probably marginally ahead simply by his better scoring. Heel, 10 second clock goes. Dorge inside, slapped by Pinder. He was turning, starting this shooting action. Pinder walks straight to the bench. He knows that's his fifth foul. 
So Pinder becomes the second player to be disqualified. We've got a timeout. When we come back, we will see at the foul line, John Dort shooting two foul shots as Tiny Pinder pensively looks back on the court with the score tied, 89 apiece. Side ball game, Geelong Supercats and Perth Wildcats, but big John Dorge could put the Supercats two points in front. Two shots from the three, three throw line as Tiny Pinder's off, along with Darren Rowe. Here's the first of them, and he makes it. As you can hear from the roar of this crowd at the arena, Geelong a point in front. And will he take his personal score to 15 and the Supercats to 91? Yes, he does. It didn't want to go in, but it did. Finally, as Tiny Pinder looks on pensively, and the Supercats lead the Wildcats by two. Grace. Crawford. Yes. So again, a tie game with four minutes and 25 seconds on the clock. That's a tough shot from Crawford because John Dorge had his hand on the ball. He still muscled it in. Geelong pressured by the Wildcats. Bateman guarded by Crawford. Crawford hanging off of him, challenging him to shoot that outside. Heel guarded by Grace. No targets yet. George from the foul line works on Allen. They got to get it up shortly. Three seconds on the clock. Bateman goes to the hoop. George can't find it. Vaughn's got it. He misses. George ball still alive. Vaughn! Just 10 points for Brian Vaughn tonight. But were those two valuable? 93 91. Three minutes and 40 on the clock. Crawford. And still this celebrated Perth team can't take the team that everyone thought would be in the dungeon this year. And still the Supercats lead the Wildcats. Ellis. Davis. Allen couldn't hold it. Grace, and it's a Supercat ball. And do the crowd here in the arena like it. They love it. Plenty of time left in the game. Three minutes and 20 seconds. Two point lead to the Supercat. Peel setting up the attack. Parkinson into the game with Darren Rowe fouled out. Pinder cooling his heel on the sideline. He too has picked up his fifth foul. Inside Bateman, double team. Vaughn takes a good look at it, dribbles to get closer, bounces around. It's not a Geelong bounce, and Crawford is pushed out of bounds by Dorge. Referee had no option but to call that. Fourth team foul now on Geelong, so it's not a shooting foul, but for John George, that's his fourth. And three Super Cat players on four fouls. Born, Parkinson, and George. Inside, you can see Crawford with the ball. He's bumped out of bounds by George. The referee, although the contact wasn't great, he had to call it. So a delicate position for Barry Barnes with three of his players with four fouls, but the time's down to 2.50. And it's all stops out now. Grace with a mighty shot. A super three-pointer to put the Wildcats in front for about the first time in this second half. And on comes Bruce Hope to Bateman. Will the Supercats respond? They've been able to all night. Not many options for Hope. Bateman, Vaughns, turns, Hope. And that's what Geelong's doing at the moment. George. No score there. Foul called before the shot. With the 30-second clock winding right down towards zero. Geelong will get the ball from the side. And a timeout's called in this exciting game with two minutes and 17 seconds remaining to play in the game. Perth has recaptured the lead, 94 to Geelong, 93. And that's a score line with two minutes and 17 seconds on the clock. Wildcats 94, Supercats 93, Geelong ball from the sideline. Brian Vaughan, Jim Dodge. Geelong desperate to find somebody who can make two points, let alone three. Jim Bateman. Vaughan again. It's really been a matter of just hoping for Geelong in these last five minutes. They've gone very negative offensively. Peel likes to shoot up over the top. He had to force that shot. Allen gets the ball. Still surrounded by blue shirts, but now Perth gets a chance to give themselves some sort of margin to play with. They lead by one at the moment. Ellis with the ball, guarded by Bruce Hope. Minute 44 on the clock. 
Grace steadies it up. 24 points, an excellent game. Crawford to Ellis. Torrance. Allen tries a long one. Doesn't get close, but Crawford takes the rebound. Foul. Ryan Valens picks up his fifth foul. Good rebound position. One of the few times Geelong didn't have great rebound position. You can see Crawford with the inside position. Foul by Vaughn from the side. That's his fifth. Geelong's task gets just that little bit harder now. Bruce Holtman into the lineup. The two imports for the Super Cats. Sitting now on the bench with five fouls. Billy Mildenhall says, none of these huddles, let's get on with the play. Crawford with 17 points in the game, has two shots. Big game on the board for James Crawford, 13 rebounds. Hits his second one, three-point lead to the Wildcats. Alan Black may be breathing a little easier for a moment, but still plenty of time for Geelong. Minute 20 on the clock. Geelong still needs to find somebody with a glimmer in their eye. Holtgren dishes inside the heel. Nice shot. Good pass from Holtgren. One point the difference. Heel up to 28 points. Grace. Geelong crowd rule their team on. Crawford. And what do we have here? This is the substitution again. After the score. Just stops the momentum of the game. Well, it's, it, it only penalizes the team making the substitution with possession of the ball. But uh, the problem is the score benches aren't used to calling it. It's the first time that that rule's been in play. But nevertheless, the Perth team wanted to get a substitution in, and they did. One point the difference. Perth, 96. Geelong, 95. Crawford up over the top. Partially blocked by Dorge. Torrance follows it inside. Big basket to Trevor Torrance. Ten, ten point in the game. Three points of difference. Shane here. Bruce Holtman. And a Wildcat ball. A huge turnover to the Wildcat, uh, to the Supercats. And uh, Holtman had a very difficult time reeling that one in. That pass led him right out of bounds. Perth really should control it from here. 39 seconds on the clock, leading by three. If they can make... A two-point here, that should be the game. Torrance and Perth ball. Five fouls to Parkinson now. So he fouls out of the game, but that was a, that was a good foul because that was really a sure two points by Trevor Torrance, set up by the good play of Ricky Grace, who got the penetration, kicked it off when the defense rotated towards him. And uh, we'll take the final break now with 34 seconds remaining to play in the game. Perth on the foul line, shooting two foul shots and leading by three points. Here's Barry Barnes. Two spots. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Setting his offense, worrying exactly what they're going to do after the foul shots. Obviously, they've got to come down and get a quick three-pointer up, then press up. They would like to, but I doubt if they'd be able to do it to get that shot up before there's 30 seconds uh, left on the clock, meaning that uh, Perth would have to take another shot. But with 34 seconds, Trevor Torrance on the line shooting two foul shots, they probably now are going to have to come up with a steal. So the margin out the four, Torrance makes his 11th point. It's been very impressive tonight. And makes 12, and it's an even 195. So now Geelong have got to try and act and act quickly. Mike Ellis will be right up into the jersey of Shane Hill because he knows that he's going to be shooting three pointers. That one didn't count, it was a practice. He was fouled. That's the fourth team foul, so that was a good foul by Mike Ellis. Geelong will have to take the ball from the sideline, and we saw six seconds wind off the clock. Now only 27 seconds remaining. Bruce Holcrum. Take it from the sideline for the Supercats. Trevor Torrance asked to stand back a little. Jim Dorge, Bruce Hope, Jim Bateman. Will Shane Hill try another three-pointer? He does. Not this time. Dorge makes two. No. But foul by Allen. a foul. Two shots. It'll be interesting to see if uh, Dorge is required to make the one and miss the second one on purpose so that Geelong can recover the ball. 
We must remember, too, the rules. The right of option has changed. So if Dorch hits both the foul shots, the, what the Supercats will try and do is steal the inbounds pass or foul instantly and force them to shoot the one-on-one -on -one foul shots at the other end. They'd like to get somebody on that line that isn't a very good foul shooter for the Wildcats. Again, this is the new rule. No right of option. So Dorch now most likely will try and hit both these and then they'll try and steal the inbounds pass. Well, he's missed one. That's not helpful. It certainly restricts the options now. Reduces them. Got the second. Let's so. see if they foul. They've got to get on him quick. Too late now. They really should be using the fouls, but it's, it's too late now with eight seconds left to go. Keepers off for the Wildcats, and they've just got out of jail on this one. And that's it. As Alan Black goes over to shake Barry Barnes's hand, and the Perth Wildcats escape with the points from the arena in Geelong. Cal Bruton happy about all that, but gee, it was a struggle. 100 to 96. Well, we at... saw a foul right at the end, so it will be a one-on-one -on -one foul shots with the players, with the fans running onto the floor. I don't envy the task of, I think it was James Cro or uh, Ricky Allen to shoot these foul shots, but it's. Uh, all without much point at this stage. Still an excellent game from the Supercats, and they came that close to, in the first round of the season, providing one of the biggest upsets probably we'll see all year. And Allen didn't hit the foul shots. So the score remains 100 for Perth and 96 for Geelong. It's the Wildcats over the Supercats. Great game at the arena. Alan Black all smiles, and so he should be. He got out of jail tonight in Melbourne or in Geelong, and it's the Wildcats taking the point.